the Graduate School, and it's a great pleasure today to have a talk on a topic that Butte has been worried about for more than 35 years, and that is the Berkeley Pit and its chemistry. Um, we are really, just before the Berkeley Pit started filling, Dr. Wong arrived to be on the faculty at Montana Tech. He arrived in 1978, and so he spent about 40 years on the faculty and retired last May. Um, <laughs> But he can't keep himself from doing all the wonderful research he's been doing all the time. Um, Dr. Jin Chun Huang, Huang. Yeah. Huang. Yeah. Um, is a retired professor of metallurgical materials engineering. Uh, his research interests are in process analysis and modeling. Uh, and uh, he developed the StatCal program, which is basically used worldwide for people who need to do thermodynamic um, calculations. And um, he is an emeritus professor, and he also was recognized in 2018 as Montana Tech's distinguished lifetime researcher. Um, and so congratulations, Dr. Wong. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we're all looking forward to your talk on the evolving chemistry of the all right. water. Thank you for attending. You know, the topic is the what happened to the Berkeley pig water. The Berkeley, uh, the uh, view area used to be the richest hills on Earth, and now it become the biggest Superfund site, and uh, it's all because of the mining activities happen around here. The Berkeley pit already accumulated about seven, uh, 47 billion gallons of water. Compared to Georgetown Lake, it's only 14 and a half billion gallons of water. So we got more water in Berkeley pit than, than, than Georgetown Lake. And I thank you all the other man, um, Montana Bureau um, Mine and Geology, particularly the Groundwater Group, and then also the Pit Watch, and then all the newspaper and so on. And I also had a literature, so I had to read it. And Professor Gammons uh, wrote a lot of paper related to the geochemistry and, uh, and, and what happened in the book of Pit. So you keep everybody updated in that area. And I apologize, I didn't put all the reference uh, list. Now the references, because so many, then, and I'm gonna have about three, four pages of references, so I just skip all that. And, and I, 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 I should have given all the people the, the credit for the taking all the work and the taking pictures and so on. The Berkeley Pit, as you know, is about one and a half mile east west and one mile north and south. And uh, it's uh, 1,780 feet deep. And then uh, if you compare the deepest lake in the United States, it's Crater Lake. And it's only, it compared to the Berkeley Pit itself, it's only about 200 feet difference. Is something wrong? Is it okay? Based on the, uh, the, you know, the report of two, 2017, they, uh, the, we only about 60, 70 feet from the critical uh, level of about 5,410. That's the sea level. The water is acidic, as you know, and very high in sulfate and heavy metals. It also has some rare earth metals in the water. Before we go on to the, the book of the pitch, and then you have to know where the old deposit of this area. Most of the, uh, the copper was produced from porphyry copper deposit. And usually has three different zones. It's an oxidized zone, 
and Richmond Zone, and then Primary Zone. And uh, you can see what an airplane network build is, should be somewhere over here. Okay. The character of the uh, cop copper ore deposits is, is contains uh, many different types of metal sulfides, and uh, usually it's a very large size, and then a very low gray, and then also has a very, if you do the mining, usually has a very long mining life, and uh, the medium, the uh, the average of the of the copper. Uh, percentage is in the world is about 0.44 percent copper and it contains so many different metal including money and then the gold and silver. Now if the oil make the make up the uh, make the cut and then uh, they normally go to the crushing grinding flotation and send it to the, the smelter. If the oil doesn't make the cut then they pile it up in the least pad or somewhere and don't ignore in this. 20 to 40 percent of the carbon that actually coming from the leach pad. <coughs> okay, let me read. The car and the, uh, the build mine is actually the same as every other mine in the world and then um, is they have an underground mine in 1864 and then open book pit mine is 1955 and then it stopped in 1982. The mine actually right on right here. They are on the enrichment zone. So when they start mining the uh, and the, uh, the open mine and in the book, uh, you can get very high grade out of all with 0.75% uh, of copper when they started. And all because uh, they, like it, they, they are in the uh, enrichment zone because uh, they have more copper than in there, there's cobalt and calcosine and, and anything like this. Okay, what is responsible for the reaction of the generating in the acid mine drainage is because of the oxidation of the of pyrite. Now, if you compare the pyrite right here, this is the EHPH diagram. If you compare the pyrite here and oxygen right here, then oxygen is capable of uh, reacting the pyrite. So once the the, the oil is spilled into the air and the water, the, the oxygen, and we're able to oxidize the pyrite into ion 2, and consequently, you can go ion 3, and ion 3 and the oxygen, we're able to oxidize the chemical pyrite and then all the other things. So, pyrite is, is the critic, is the uh, responsible for generating the SMI. Join it. I'm not going to go through each one, but the red one is the pyrite that being oxidized to dissolve it. So, this is a list of the of the, the water over the year. This is 1992, and then uh, then uh, 19, uh, 2012, and then uh, you have the most recent one is. Is the uh, November uh, 18. I took this one from um, Ted Duane. <laughs> and also listing the uh, drinking water standard and then uh, irrigation standard. Now, the drinking water standard it changes, so I don't know what's going on in, in uh, 2018. But I highlight the one that changing dramatically over the time is the ions that you get really reduce it down to uh, to from uh, the 
1,000 down now is about 1.7 milligram per liters, and copper also reduced, and then uh, the pH increases, and then the ORP or EH also increases. We're going to explain some of those numbers later on. Am I going too fast or too slow? Okay. Oh, I missed one of the picture. I don't know where the other picture, but that's fine. That's good enough. In 1992, the uh, Montana Tech and the Canoli Environmental just sponsored by the ARCO and the EPA to perform the treatability study. And the, part, the, the, the object of the, product, uh, of the project is to follow the gold book. You probably didn't know what that is. But the one important number you, they want to follow is the aluminum, the critical aluminum for aquatic life, because the ones aluminum get into the fish, the gill, they were suffocating the fish and so on. So they get in the number is 750 microgram per liter. Again, this number changes in 2018, last year then. So if you're really interested in that, then you have to read all this new thing. Okay, after the, uh, the treatability study for all the alternatives, then I uh, recommend the, the two-stage neutralization process. And the reason here, you know, if you neutralize, you know, if you neutralize the, the pig water, and then uh, you, you, you cannot find one pH will do all the job. So any time you have two, there are two pHs, that's why it's called two stages. And if you look at an aluminum, that it precipitated out a much lower in neutral pH. Now if you keep at neutralizing that, it will read it down. And not only that, you, if you look at iron three, precipitate and then it come and root it off. So also they follow all the aluminum. So in other words, you separate that into two groups. That's where the, uh, the two stage uh, neutralization come out. So if you hear the two stage, this is a reason because some were started out earlier and some were started out later. I think in the chop out somehow. Oh, here it is. This is this is all water, and this is the new water. This is the last year water. It behaves the same way aluminum comes out early, and then um, same thing. If you're looking for arsenic, they're being absorbed by iron three. It will, will, will come out because the iron three will be dissolved. So pretty much in the same way. Yeah. Now, so this is the test that we did and uh, in, 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 in metallurgy and NRI by the Bureau. And then uh, the Canoni doesn't, they want to double checking what we do to send it to other, other uh, um, independent contractor. And the results are pretty much the same. If you do the two stages, the aluminum goes down as what the requirement does. And then if you do it only one stage, here's the, whoop. If you do it one stage, just drop the, uh, uh, increase the pH to about 10, it doesn't make the standard. So that, that's why that two stages is coming out. This is the one I copied from the uh, Montana standard, and I just highlight what the uh, the MR is or ARCO is going to do to treat the book of pure water. And uh, if you go to Continental Drive, you see they are doing the construction of the, uh, they are actually constructing this. So what they do is the, the first they pump to the precip plant, and then um, after they remove the copper, 
Then they go to the horseshoe bend water treatment. That, that's the one that you see two towers sticking it up. And then I send it to the Yankee do the tailing. And then I send to the push, a policy plan. They are doing it. They're constructing it right now. And then eventually go to the silver bowl quick. Okay, what are the sources of the water that go into the Berkeley pit? There's the underground water and then uh, the surface water. The underground water is because of the higher elevation of the water, higher than the Berkeley pit, so they all come in down into the Berkeley pit and they go through uh, several different type of the uh, uh, rock, uh, alum aluminum and the bedrock or the, uh, the underground walking and uh, and they all go into the uh, the book period underground. According to the uh, 2016 report, the average flow is about 2.5 million gallons per day. <laughs> Does it look all right? I think it used to be a little higher. Is that right? <laughs> about three or three point five. But anyway, this is very like all faithful, they all go in and they're very consistent. And then the surface water is the water that you collect from the uh, from the whole shoe bin line uh whole shoe bin uh area and those waters are are collected from the leach pack and then all the uh, they all go in there and they uh they sometimes they discharge it to the broker repair, sometimes they divert to the, to do something else. So uh, that is it's the, uh, the, it's called surface water. Right now, the only water that go into the, uh, go into the broker repair from the surface water are all the, uh, the water that trap into the, uh, the treatment plant. Is it because it's the slurry? And that's probably very little water coming out of the surface right now. Okay, this is the list that I rewrite from uh, from uh, the, the timeline of the what happened to the book of the pit. And um, don't even read it. Uh, if you're interested in detail, what the date? of that year that the uh, tech to bank can provide you the one on a very long sheet and uh, you were able to see the date on this run up. To me it just to me is the event that they were counting then Okay. So there are a couple of natural and the mining activity changing the inflow to the water. And uh, that's a one big uh, uh, landslide uh, really big. <laughs> and the 1.3 cubic yards of the, 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 the wall that's falling into. It's not like a highway 15 that go to hand on out of the rock drop. No, 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 it's a big one. The water rested about two and a half inch feet tall and, and so on. There are two more minor sizes that doesn't affect the water level. Okay, the mining activity is mostly is the water that comes from the horseshoe bend, and uh, I just mentioned it. And uh, you don't have to know in detail. Uh, if you really like, read the timeline of the, the, what happened in the Berkeley pit. But no matter what you're doing in the mining operation, you can see water continually uh, raising it up. And um, that is the curve. And then the critical level is about here. 2023 is what they thinking they will be uh, figured out. But I think the MR and ARCO is working on it right now before, before you reach the critical level, then it will be difficult to handle once you start overflow or something. Okay, one of the biggest events that happened to the bulk of pit water is the disappearing of the chemical chemo, chemo, chemo line. 
chemical chlorine. Okay, what is the chemical chlorine? Is the, the line between the, uh, the surface water and the deep water. And the compositions are quite different, so you should be able to see it uh, uh, by analyzing, uh, the, by plotting the concentration versus the depth, and then you were, the, were able to uh, estimate what they are. The surface layer is usually forming the oxidation of the iron 2 to iron 3 and then precipitating out uh, with, with whatever the gyrosite or, 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 or swarmonite. So the layer is normally on the high EH and the lower iron and then uh, usually you might see the, uh, the suspended solid coming out. And um, before 2004, this layer right here is going slowly deepen, but it takes a long time to move. So you can see the slope right here is slowly increasing in the depth. But after that, you can see a very big drop in terms of the, uh, the, the, the layers start going in. And why it's so slow at the beginning, because of the air, the, uh, to convert the, uh, the deep water to uh, surface water, you need oxygen. And oxygen usually provided from the air, so that the diffusion, you have to go through that layer. So uh, the layer going slowly. But after this, what happens here is the, uh, so after 2004, the boundary layer deepened very fast. It took only about, where now we? Oh, I didn't mention it here. It, it actually took about six, seven years to completely destroy it. And uh, if you look at the, uh, the data, the, the deep water start oxidizing it, so you can, you can see the iron 2 start decreasing as a function of year. And by the time of 2010 or so, that, uh, the iron 2 from the deep water is almost disappeared, and then there was the iron 3 were coming out of it. Now what is responsible is the oxygen. This is computer generated. And then uh, you can see uh, using the deep water and putting oxygen into it. And then uh, we'll see it uh, start decreasing just like this. And then, um, and then iron 3 will increase it. It's almost, so it's the same train uh, because of the oxygen was added into it. So the responsible reaction is the oxidation of the deep water. So what happened is the, uh, is the, so I draw a little diagram of what happened was the, uh, was the, the Emma stopped pumping the water, the deep water from 1999 for what about a year, then the shutdown, and then uh, they started again 2004, and then, uh, and then to about 2013 they stopped it. Now, why is so dramatic? Because they pump a lot of water. I wasn't surprised. I was very surprised to see this number. They pump is about 10,000 gallons per minute. If you calculate for 10 years, that's a 50 billion gallons of water. They pump it from the bottom and then put it up on the top. So almost we feel the whole Berkeley pig water. And that when you're coming back to the top, it doesn't pump it back to the bottom, they, they just draw it out to the top, and then uh, there's a chance to oxidize. So it gets a chance to react with the oxygen, and that is what happened here. So you see the surface water has a much higher dissolved oxygen, and that really, when the iron two coming in, you react them. The other thing is the pH changes. When pH increases, the rate of the reaction increases. So surface water, higher pH, that accelerating the reaction, so it's converting 
iron 2 to iron 3 very easily. I think there are two diagrams. Oh, okay. And I go back out. Okay, there are only two components possible in the Burger pig water. You can oxidize it and precipitate it. And one is manganese, and the other one is iron too. The manganese, uh, if you see it right here, the um, the, uh, the the oxygen is right on the dash line here. Oxygen cannot oxygen cannot oxidize in the uh, manganese from manganese to the manganese four uh, precipitate. So only chance that happened the precipitation is the uh, iron three, and you can see uh, it's an iron three. Uh, iron two used to be around here. In two, what year is that? 2003, and then when you go to 2017 or 18, you start going to the uh, going to Swampernai area. And so that is what happened: is the oxidized iron two to iron three precipitated out of the Swampernai, and you can see the uh, dissolve out because of you most of the iron two would start decreases so you have accumulating the dissolved oxygen in the water so you can see it 2000, 2008 to 12 this is around here dissolved oxygen but 2017 uh, to 18 the dissolved oxygen in the water increases in, in other words you use it uh, uh, to oxidize the iron 2 when the iron 2 decreases so you start accumulating the dissolved oxygen. Now if the dissolved oxygen increases, so is the EH. So the oxidation potential also increases because of the iron too. So all this data are uh, proving that the, because of the oxygen is being used to oxidize iron two to iron three. Okay, what is the effect of the discharge of the sludge from the treatment plant? Because they treat the water and then they dump the sludge into the Berkeley pit. Now the treated the sludge it has a very high pH, so you start increasing the pH of the water. And that is, as you can see, as the, the pH of the water increases over the time and the you can see some of the changes in here, it's tough to, here we are. It also increases the copper, a little bit of copper, aluminum, and the zinc, and because of that, dump the sludge into the pit, and we did all in that. Okay, here's the water sample. When the bulkhead repeat the stop, Stop mining in 19, and then I let it to flood in 19. Okay. The Bureau, Bureau of Mine Geologists not taking the sample in 1987 and it's continuously at least twice a year, at least. And uh, so they also analyzing those uh, samples they took and from the Berkeley pit also from the whole Shubei mine and then also the surrounding wall and then the mining shaft. Am I saying it right? If I make a mistake, I apologize. So they are, we analyze all the samples that are taken out and then we have at least 200 credible essays of the sample that are taken from the Berkeley pit itself. And there's a critical thermal, for critical thermodynamic analysis that they all in there. And they have a summary sheet in the spreadsheet. They also have the detail, uh, individual one, 
and and uh, it's a very fine place. You now have to use a, I use a magnifying glass in you know, order <laughs> to read that, but they are there. And the uh, important thing to me is the depth and the temperature. And pH is an ORP. ORP means the EH. I usually say EH. It's oxidation reduction potential. That's just the right word. And then uh, the dissolved oxygen. They also, I use also four anions, include the sulfate and CK, fluoride and chloride. And then two, 24 common cations. Now, since 2008, they add nothing more than that. And uh, that include also the rare earth and all the analyzers and all this. And then uh, we also, it also has about 10 of the assays that include the ion 2, ion 3 speciation between the two. And uh, so that a lot of very detail, uh, believe me, detail of the, uh, of the uh, sample that taken from the Berkeley food. Now, if you look in at some of the literature, they estimate free energy of swaponite. They did it in the lab, and they do it in a, a very, it's not the real situation of the SMI drainers. This group of the data is probably the best one you can see in the world that describing what happened in the SMI water. So they should take advantage of all this. Now, if you look at the numbers, the depth is going from surface water to somewhere around 900 feet or so. 800, 900 feet. <laughs> That's a little greater than the taking out that. The temperature is actually pretty steady. It's somewhere around 6 to, to 9 or 10, that range. You know, 5 degrees C to about 10 degrees C. And then uh, it's occasionally you see a, a little lower or a little higher, but you only plus minus uh, uh, two, about three degrees C. The ORP was started out with a very low, and then because of the oxidation, it's going up to about 600 millivolts. Uh, somewhere, usually somewhere around 600 millivolts. That weather, you know, that should be very steady on this. The pH is start increases now. It's going from much more acid to a much a little neutralized, a little bit, somewhere around four. So now, before you try to estimate the uh, the uh, the free energy or the thermodynamic data of the solid that you think that equivalent or equilibrate with the water, then you have to make sure that water actually equilibrate with the solids. So uh, if you're looking at the old diagram, this is the old water and this is the newer water. You pretty much see you know, the swivel line happen to be all in all the pHs, you know, the newer water and the older water. Now, if you're going to estimate the general size, then uh, this, uh, this is a title. Uh, this is the chemical formula of the swivel line, and then uh, you have a high, I need a mouth. You have hydronium gel side, you have a potassium hydronium gel side, you also have the regular gel side. But all this gel side, actually, if you predict it, then it's only happened to here. In other words, if you take a sample and assuming that's, that is equivalent, equilibrated with the water, you make sure that water, the pH of the water should be only around here for general size. But for most of the people, you see, uh, most of the sample that you will see that will be okay to, uh, to do the, uh, the thermodynamics of the swap on that. Swobonai is usually um, reported that usually is the first one that you, you gather from the SMI 
So that is why he had the swamp line. And this is a picture from um, uh, uh, the precipitate, the settlement from, um, I hope it is the settlement, not the, uh, the from the Berkeley pit. So uh, then you can see that, that uh, this the two agree, but if you let the swamp line for a long time, then that start decom not decom we do crystallize and then go into a good height. And uh, this is an example, uh, this is the picture of the swamp line that form of the first day. And then uh, if you wait for one year or so, you start, you start forming some of the good height on that. And then uh, eventually, the gold high will be uh, converted to the crystalline gold high. So it's a very long process actually coming from here. So if you take a, a sample from uh, the Berkeley pit, it is probably get the swamp line rather than the gold high itself. But it will, it will eventually convert it back to the, because, because gold high is thermodynamic, is the more stable than Swamp or So what we did was the uh, taking all the samples, uh, analyzers, and then start estimating what will be the thermodynamic data for all those four solar species. And uh, this is the steps that you have to do. You take every sample, there are 200 of them, and then you speciate in on that to get the equilibrium constant of that, uh, uh, of that particular water. And then uh, you average it out as a function of temperature. You do the multiple regression and uh, include the temperature. And then how many times it happened, it's occurrence, how many times it happened on that temperature. And then uh, you do regression and get to your the free energy or equilibrium constants. But that usually is not a very good number to use. Then you have to convert. You have to convert the com conventional way and then uh, you, you thermodynamic data, then uh, you, uh, you integrate that to the database that you use. Here's an example of the swap line under the different temperature, and you can see the two degree different. It's already about 10, about two degree, uh, two kilocalorie. This is kilocalorie, I hope I wrote it down somewhere, right here. Two kilocalorie in two degree, and they, they kept doing up, so, but those numbers are only good from two to 16 degree, because this is a water that in the book appears, so that, you cannot take that number and then extrapolate all the way to 25 degrees C. That is not, this is the only good. But that is what the most of the my SMI drainage is it doesn't go 25 degrees C. Now, if you integrate this in the form of the thermodynamic data, then you have to go free energy and entropy for 25 degrees C, you go delta G zero, and you use the entropy of, of S, and then uh, the heat capacity because of temperature effect, and then A, B, C. This is a very curly way of writing the, uh, the heat capacity. But remember, this data is only from two degree to six degree well, for to be the accurate. Now, if we take all this data and plug it into the, uh, 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 put it into the thermodynamic data and then we plot the EHPH diagram, I add 20% more of the ion just to make sure that will be in the area of the precipitate. If, if I didn't add that 20% more, this line will go up to here. So I add 20% more uh, ion and uh, you can see, and this is the area is general side, and this is a general side plus the swab line. This is a general side, excuse me. Right, and this is a swab line equivalent, but in other words, you will see both 
the same time, uh, if you go up to here, you will only see the general swarm line. So you can see here, right at the first picture, it's only the general size. So it's probably taken from here. I took that from the literature. So, so probably taken up from here. Now, if you go further up, uh, this is uh, coexisting with the swivel line and the general sign, and then you can see the swivel line more like room, and and the uh, general sign is usually more crystalline. So you can see they are coexisting at the same time, that because they are in these regions. Now, if you Simulating the EHPH that's the, using the new water that was 2017 and 18, and then uh, you see the swirl on eye. That's it. Uh, you don't see. You don't see the. Uh, you don't see the general size. And uh, why it's happened? Because uh, sulfur. You're gonna have uh, more sulfur in here. The sulfur and the iron ratio is 1,400, so it's not a sulfate in the water, and also the pH is high, so there's no chance for the potassium or the for hydronium to competing with the, such a different environment, so you're not able to see zero size in anywhere in the, uh, in the water. In other words, if you go and take a sample, uh, from the uh, the book of the pit right now, you're never gonna find Gerald's idea out of that. And uh, so, what is critical is the report that Bureau already done. They have a sample, uh, they have a report right there. They have a number for the old water, but you cannot get the new water uh, and get the, compared to the new, uh, the new work anymore, so. I'm sorry, I got choked. <laughs> Those are the critical report of essays of all the 200 samples that were found in the Bureau. This is a picture of the swamp line, and uh, you can see it's a very, uh, 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 it's, it's not very uh, crystalline. Okay, so once you get all the data, what will you do with it? So I just put in up some of the example, and then the first thing I do is acidity of the water. And the, the actual acidity of water is go to the lab and titrate with the sodium hydroxide to pH 8.3. Now, if you're not able to do that like me, then I use a computer to simulate that. Now the simulation of the titration should be the actual, as close as the actual water itself. You cannot say I uh, have so many sulfate, so many iron, and do the simulation. You have to have all the components of the water included, and that will be, uh, we are we 20, total of 29 components, you have to be close enough to what the actual water you're gonna do. And so you titrate in that with the sodium, uh, one normal sodium hydroxide, you put in the pH is 8.3, and find out how much you, the volume of the sodium hydroxide that you use. I'm using this example, is the newest water, in the uh, essay that in from the book repeat and then you will take a fifty five point five mils of the one normal sodium hydroxide to win the pH right here and you see it. pH eight point three two three point or something. That's the closer I can get. And, um, and then you you find it out this how much of the, uh, the water that you use is it's too difficult to read. This is raw in here. Um, the final pH is 8.3. We're using one normal of the sodium hydroxide, and then um, and then uh, find it out how much it is 55.5, and then you do the formula. There is the formula 
for actual titration is the, the same for, that I use the same formula and ended up at 2,750. If the water is about 10 years old before, it, usually, it used to be at about 4,000. So it's, you see the acidity of the waters that decreased in uh, this. Oh, oh, it's a little, yeah. Okay, what can you do with the simulation also is to, to process the simulation and then you add a sodium, you add a sodium hydroxide and see what happened. And, and that is the, so you, what important is the solubility? You don't care what concentration of the individual species, there are 190 of them. And are you interested in is what the solubility of the, of the water, and you look at that aluminum again, that's coming out, and then so on, what the pH response. They're all done by the computer, and the, that's a function of the sodium hydroxide. So this diagram will be useful that you want to know how much sodium hydroxide you need to to get to what you wanted to do. But sometimes you want to have the solubility as a function of pH, and then you say, I have a pH controller, and then say, I want a pH 7.8, then I will know what the solubility of the species. So it took only about two minutes to get it, and uh, they'll give you a very idea, and then uh, you go to the lab, and then you see if it works out or not. <laughs> Okay, the other thing is absorption of the arsenic by swabonite. And uh, do you see when, this is diagram reversal all the time. Here you go. Here. The original, the 2003 for instance, that reported it, and then uh, go to 2017 or 18, you can see iron decrease. The same thing happened to the arsenic also decreased. Did I say it right? Let me repeat. The iron decreases with time, and so is arsenic decreased with time. So there is a some relationship. This is a log scale. The relationship between the disappearing of the arsenic and the, uh, and the disappear, uh, precipitating, that's a precipitating in the iron, so the iron decreases. So it's the only reason, if you look at the thermodynamic arsenic, it doesn't precipitate in that condition because it is too, too low to precipitate the arsenic as 205. So the only reason here is the arsenic is probably being absorbed by the swobonite. Now if you, that's just how you do. Now if I do the little mass calculation, uh, how much is it? Arsenic disappear from 2003 to 2017 and 18, and that, that's just the numbers right here. Now, I also do the calculation of the arsenic absorbed by, by uh, uh, ferric hydride because this is well documented uh, right here. Uh, uh, absorption by uh, the ferric hydride and uh, then this is a calculator. Now if you compare the two for one each individual ion because of the swap on a higher eight ion in there, then it's very high so I had only one. So you cannot say this, suppose it said you go back by one uh, ion and then the, the, you can see that the swap on ion that absorb a lot more than the very high joy. It's about twice the more and the very high dry. So I think it's some, I hope somebody will study more than this area. But the, again, the swab and I, uh, the absorption of the metal right here. Not as well studied the formula is. Swab and I does absorb, absorb the arsenic. That's in the literature. And then also some of the metal ion just like a fairy hydride does. 
But this one has a formula into that. It's based on the double layer theory. But I just you use it, you will be OK. So it's important to see that arsenic uh, arsenic being absorbed by the swabber line. I'll go to the next. Oh, I'm all done. I thank you for your attention, and then I thank uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Harland, uh, Dean Harland, for the opportunity, and then uh, oh, this is great learning for me to prepare this talk. I've been talking to Steve and uh, talking to Ted Duane all the time. I hope they won't, they won't feel I bother them. I thank you, everybody, the monkey, uh, the, uh, the Montana Bureau of Mine and GRG, and in the particular group of on the Groundwater Information Center. Now I can say that <laughs> after I see it so many times. And uh, particularly to the Ted and uh, Steve McGrath uh, for that. I also thank you, Gary, for taking me to the, uh, the uh, Crystal Mine and Brilliant mine. <laughs> Don't ever go by yourself with your car. <laughs> yeah. You cannot get help when you in there. This is fun. I really enjoy it. I uh, also thank the, uh, the job manager. He was the, you know, he, he did the earlier study with with Ted Wayne in the old building under the tunnel. And uh, I don't know that office is open. It's still being used. Still being used. You have to go under the tunnel. And I enjoy that. I also have a thank you for an analytical lab that did an excellent job. Uh, Steve was uh, in charge of it for a while. And uh, now it's, I think it's still doing OK. I also thank the Chris Gammons and his students. He publishes a lot. He keeps everybody updated on what's going on in, in, in the book. So I really think I'd read it if you, if you if you're interested in the book, I read some of the papers from uh, Professor Gammons. It, um, it really well written papers and and a very nice drawing. Not like mine. It was just I'm not an artist, so I didn't draw <laughs> on this. So thank you very much. I think okay. <laughs> Any question? Yeah. So as the pH goes up, is the composition of Schertmanite changing to incorporate? There's a structure? I don't know. I don't know. I just I just use one formula. Though. Actually, the swap one I, that I use is just based on the mass between the sulfur and sulfur and iron. And uh, I just say, well, this is the most average one, so I just took that. And um, actually, it's not very popular numbers. But this structure, about, they report about six, seven different structures on this. Yeah. And uh, I, I don't know. I just kind of average it I mean, out. It's evolving into gertite anyway, right? Right. And now, does gertite have the same absorption capacity for arsenic? I, no, no. Not even close to uh, uh, hydronium uh, ferry hydride, no. Ferry hydride actually is supposed to be a good one. I think a swole one will beat them. Yeah, the top, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? I have a question. Um, I'm, I'm, I have to get to Oh, OK. Um, so with the gerasite, you, you calculated new data for the stability of gerasite. Gerasite. You, you calculated new data based on right, the, the, right. the, the right. Berkey Pitt chemistry. Right. And I wonder how different it is from, from the literature. Data, literature. I have a data, but I didn't, I didn't compare them. I, yeah. Because of the number is this long, you cannot just by looking at the number and knowing that. You have to calculate and then plot it. Yeah. And I, uh, I, uh, 
I have to I have to plot them in order to see the difference between the two. That's a good question. I do have the numbers, but I don't know. It's come from uh, LL and L. Lawrence Livermore National Lab. They have a numbers for the uh, genres, yeah. I guess in some of our, in some of our, uh, excuse me. Okay. In some of our, because uh, we always found, like, if you use these old reported numbers, gerocyte always no. is super saturated. Always. In, uh, I, I was always hoping that water has been such field tone. Oh. That's the one I would think. Yeah. Then that will be it. If it's super saturated or not, it's, well, anyway, this is statistically analyzed. So you kind of average it out. So that you cannot, you cannot say one sample will fix that because you do the average for that. It's have 200 samples. So it, you need a lot of statistical analysis to reject the outliner and then so on. It's just not just it's not just you use one or average it out. You you have to do a lot of looking in order to say, well this one is oh, well, so it's 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 been statistical analyzed and then uh, uh, a multiple regretting it in that so one sample doesn't really represent what is going on. Any more questions? Okay, I thank you very much. <laughs>